I mean, is the basic point you're trying to make that you, that the administration fully grasped the threat posed by uh, ISIL uh, and took uh, aggressive and effective action to confront that threat from the beginning of the year? Is that what you're trying to argue? Yes. And then if, if that's the case, how is it that they were so successful in uh, if your actions were so effective and so aggressive, how is it that since the beginning of the year they've been able to seize very large swathes of territory, by some estimates a third of Iraq uh, and Syria? Well, I think one, uh, what I was referring to is the uh, our increased <coughs> effort starting in January. As you know, some of those uh, some of those towns or areas fell around that point in time. Uh, clearly, we were aware of the threat of ISIL, uh, as I met, as I kind of referenced through the course of when we designated ISIL, when we took action. There were discussions internally about what kind of assistance we could provide to them uh, long before January. Uh, so what we did was we provided the type of assistance to help best equip the Iraqi security forces. Now, I think your point is an important one. What no one anticipated was the fact, and it's very hard to track or anticipate the will of, uh, of a security force or an army to fight was that they would uh, they would crack at the at the uh, when ISIL came and attacked them and obviously that led to some of the early victories um, that we saw now there were cases and I, I, I gave an example of uh, Ramadi and that's a case where we've obviously continued to work with the Iraqi security forces while the situation is extremely ser serious Ramadi has never fallen to ISIL but clearly uh, you know there is uh, I don't think anybody anticipated exactly what the Iraqi security forces would do, and that, I think, contributed to the early was, was impact. That, I mean, the U.S. government trained the Iraqi forces for the better part of a decade. Was that not a failure to not understand that this armed force that the U.S. government had trained at enormous taxpayer cost was not, in fact, capable of, uh, of defending its own territory? I mean, wasn't that a, a, something you missed then? Well, if nobody was able to anticipate that, wasn't that a, a failure somehow? Well, I think, one, Arshad, there are a couple of steps we've taken to do things a little bit differently. No, no, I'm talking, we're talking about the past here. I mean, you I said know, that, that it was very a, hard to anticipate this, but you guys were the primary funders and trainers of this military force for nearly a decade. Wasn't that, at a minimum, a failure of understanding on your part not to figure out that you had trained a force that would collapse? Well, first, I would say we've done our assessment and about, you know, we've assessed that there certainly still are capabilities and there are Iraqi security forces that are absolutely prepared to fight um, and have been prepared to fight. Um, in addition, and what I was trying to get at, is there are certainly lessons learned, Arshad, about how we've done things in the past. That's one of the reasons that uh, we're working to put in, working with the Iraqi government. They're implementing it to put in place this National Guard because we know that the Sunni tribes can't be disaffected as they have been before. It needs to be, uh, you know, a united front and a united military front moving forward. Jen, Jen 